Eddie Stobart is shifting it up a gear. Away we go then. All right, yeah, Bob. They're already one of the kings of road and rail. But now they're aiming high, flying to an ever-growing number of international destinations. Thank you. What's next, please? They've invested in some brand new state-of-the-art kit. It's nice to have a bit of new machinery, something that nobody's ever used before. So they're ready to tackle the toughest missions. Come on! It's a little bit of a, uh, a white knuckle ride at the moment. Brave the wildest weather. I don't like snow. One minute there it was clear, and the next minute couldn't see nothing. And confront colossal challenges. Mental this, isn't it? I can't even see where I've got to get to. The pressure is always on. I don't know where we are at the moment now. To keep this iconic company running at full throttle. Let's keep going, fighting, fighting through it. We're, uh, we're up against it a little bit at the moment. 16.59, and that's beer for five o'clock. <laughs> Coming up, the heat is on as they tackle a treacherous 500-mile mega mission. Get sparred and it starts to slide off the road. I'll ask you to get out there. And I won't be asking twice because if you look back, I won't be here. South End Airport's new high priced plane de icer is put to the ultimate test. If there's any frozen particles in any of the wings at any time, it could be catastrophic. It could cause an accident. And laid back Welsh wizard Ashley Maddox is pushed to the trucking limit. Who needs prison sentences? Just stick people out in a truck with about 10 drops around London. Not do anything wrong again. Eddie Stobart was founded 40 years ago with just one truck and a handful of drivers that delivered fertilizer in the Cumbrian countryside. Today, they have an army of 4,500 truckers who deliver to all corners of the country 365 days a year. Betty, your bananas are on the way. But out of their massive brigade, one man stands out as a little bit special. No, not him. Him. Hi, job's grand. 38-year-old Peter Grant is the company's one and only log wagon specialist. It's an exciting job. It gets the adrenaline rushing when you're heading up into the wood. His monster timber truck is called Laura Jane, and she was bought especially to transport tons of trees from remote forests to processing plants. It's 7 a.m. at the Carlisle Depot. And Peter is leaving with a long and potentially dangerous day of logging ahead of him. It's been snowing for the last week now, so it's about an inch, an inch and a half thick of ice. Hopefully it won't be too bad to travel on, but uh, we'll see how we get on. The first part of his journey is a 35-mile trip across the border to Eskdale Muir Forest in Dumfries and Galloway, where he'll pick up a load of logs. It's then a 17-mile drive south to a sawmill in Lockerbie, where they'll be cut into panels. The first 25 miles is a smooth ride north into Scotland. But as he enters the outskirts of the forest, Peter gets the chills. Temperature at the minute sitting at just on zero. The brutal cold has turned the road into an ice rink, which could turn his 16 and a half metre truck into a toboggan. It will just push over the side and in the ditch and then it's chaos. But this cool customer has an ace up his sleeve in his fight against the frost. This is when the fun starts. His trusty snow chains. It's not very flash like, but it does the job. A steel chain is fitted to each of the two wheels that drive the front axle of the truck, forming a mesh around its special puncture-resistant tires, gripping them to the icy roads. Thread it round so it looks like a spider's web. They must be wrapped tightly around the tires. Slipping off on a patch of ice could cause the truck to jackknife. Keep that tight. That's basically it.
Now Peter can take his 19-tonne wagon deep into the trucking treachery of the forest. If he gets fired and it starts to, if you start to slide off the road or anything like that, I'll ask you to get out there. And I won't be asking twice, because if you look back, I won't be here, because I already got out. The minute it's not too bad, there's only a wee bit of a drop, about three foot on either side of the road. When we go a wee bit further round, it's a uh, be 12, 15 foot down there. So there's no pounding tarmac for Peter, but a slow 15 miles per hour creep along the track. All right, some good views in the wood there. Not so good to drive in right enough, but it's, it does look good like I. Uh... It takes him 45 minutes to navigate the 10 mile long path to his pickup point. Right, that's us. Sorted. 100,000 acres in size, the same as 50,000 football pitches. This huge, sustainable forest is full of 40 million trees. And it's down to Peter to grab his load, as his clever piece of kit has its own crane. This is my little house. Two control levers, two foot pedals, open and close the grab. This beast of burden holds 25 tonnes of logs, the same weight as five elephants, with its monster claw grabbing a ton at a time. But this tricky task is no issue for our logging lieutenant. He's been tossing cables for seven years. My first load, it took me two and a half hours to load a load of these. Now, half an hour, that's us done, ready to go. It's all just practice, like. With his load secured in a reinforced aluminium cradle, Peter must squeeze every ounce of juice from his 500 horsepower engine to make the 17 mile crawl through the snow to a sawmill in Lockerbie. Chains grip the road better when they've got a full load on, just with the weight on the drive axle, so then they bite into the ice a bit better. The chains are about to be put to the ultimate test, along with Peter's driving skills, as he must negotiate his whopper of a wagon down a steep, slippery hill. Rolling down the hill here. The brakes give it a wee bit of a touch now and again just to kind of hold you back a wee bit. You don't want to be putting them too hard on, everything will start locking up. You end up jackknifing like a. Peter's cool under the pressure and makes it safely out of the snowy woods. He takes off the chains. and hits the tarmac for a 10-mile blast to get his lorry of logs to the sawmill in Lockerbie. That'll be us, sorted. His lorry unloaded, Peter's leg of this journey is complete. That's us, job's done. But his logs still have a long way to go. Coming up... Peter passes the log mission to Mark Dixon, but it hits the skids. I've got a flat battery, yeah? So as you can see, my truck won't start. And Welsh wizard Ashley Maddox has his day from trucking hell. That's just diabolical. That's just craptastic. Eddie Stobart's red and green machines drive over half a million miles every day. The same distance as going to the moon and back. 750 are driven by trampers who live and sleep in their trucks. And they're the ones who rack up the most mileage. Time and traffic can beat me down, but I tell you what, I'll get up fighting every single time. 45-year-old tramper Ashley Maddox takes great pride in delivering on time every time. And he's about to face one of the toughest trucking jobs on the books. It's 5.30 a.m. at his base in Cumbran, South Wales. I've got the day from hell. I've been given seven drops around London. We'll try and raise a smile whilst doing it, but I don't think that's going to happen. Ashley's just picked up 20 pallets of loft insulation 
and is faced with a 150-mile trek east to London, where he must circumnavigate 75 miles around the capital to try and complete seven drops in just one day. And he only has nine hours of driving time to do it in. This is my worst scenario, my worst nightmare. It is far from the cream of the crop, this, I tell you now. If they say there's cream jobs, this is the soured cream. His seven deliveries are to one of the largest DIY retailers in the UK, and they're all expected on time. You know, if I can get through all this without any hiccups, that'll be a big achievement for me, that will. The first 20 miles through Ashley's beloved Wales are plain sailing. But then he hits the English border. Just on the M4 now crossing the uh, second seven crossing, so winds have picked up. So, uh, they're quite strong, actually. The Severn Bridge crosses the Severn River, a natural border between Wales and England. Its side railings are designed to reduce crosswinds, but today they're gusting at a gale force 50 miles per hour, which is treacherous for a truck carrying light loft insulation. The only thing with the, the, the kind of load I'm carrying today is it's quite a light product, and we're 14 foot six high as well, so on a day like today when the winds are up quite strong, you tend to be a bit of a kite. You know, you're getting blown around, so you've got to keep your wits about you. Up on two wheels and then flipping over on the side is not uh, the, the, the kind of thing I want to be experiencing. Ashley gets his 16 and a half metre kite safely across the bridge and leaves behind his beloved homeland. Bye bye South Wales. And is now on a collision course with his nemesis, London. This is the kind of job today now with these seven drops that, uh, you know, they test you to the limit, your driving skills, your navigational skills. The M4 remains clear for 80 miles until Ashley hits Reading, Britain's largest town. Total nightmare. It's 8.15 a.m. and rush hour, so it seems that every one of its 150,000 population wants to get on the road. It's just a multi-storey car park. That, that's just, that's just diabolical. That's just craptastic. For the next two hours, Ashley crawls just 20 miles along the M4 and M3. And he's still 25 miles from his first drop. I find these signs up here like this are saying 40 mile an hour now, it's quite comical because I would love to be doing 40 mile an hour. The way it's looking, we're roughly going to be about two and a half hours behind. We've got the day from hell in the traffic from hell. Finally, the congestion clears, but Ashley is about to be hit with another body blow. He's been on the road for nearly four and a half hours, and legally, that means he's got to pull over. My main priority now is to get parked up, take a break, not break the law. If he doesn't get off the road, he could be in big trouble. Consequences can be quite hefty fines, um, you know, points on my licence, or, you know, even possibility of, of having my licence suspended. The next services are just five miles away, but to get there, Ashley must brave the busiest road in Britain, the M25 around London. Every time you come around a different corner on this M25, it just seems to get from bad to worse. The M25 is 118 miles long, making it one of the longest ring roads in the world. It has 33 junctions, connecting nine other motorways. It cost £909 million to build over 11 years. That's £7.5 million per mile. Used by 200,000 vehicles every day, its longest recorded stationary traffic jam was 22 miles long. With just 10 minutes left on the clock, Ashley makes it to Cobham Services in Surrey, but still has 17 miles to his first drop. Things are looking up. It's just the seven drops to get off now. <laughs> We'll catch up with Ashley later, 
to see if he can complete his multi-drop mission. Earlier, Peter Grant transported 25 tonnes of logs from a snowy Scottish forest to a sawmill in Lockerbie. After being cut into thousands of planks, their final destination is 400 miles away in Kent. And that mission calls for a man who clocks up 100,000 miles every year, enough to drive round the earth four times. 36-year-old Twitter sensation, Mark Dixon. We're on it. This whole system's go. It's 6 a.m. and Mark and his trusty truck, Phoebe Grace, have arrived to pick up the planks. Could be better, could be like warmer. His load weighs nearly 26 tonnes, so he can't hit the road until it's safely secured. I have to get there in one piece and no piece. Unluckily for the trees, they're in a thousand pieces. Sorry, tree, I'm sorry you had to die and all that, but you do smell nice. When we die, we stink. Trees don't. <laughs> Imagine pop pure house, what it smells like. It's well nice. With the sweet smell of success and potpourri in his nostrils, Mark leaves Lockerbie with 400 miles of tarmac ahead of him. So I've got a lot of driving to today. Mark has a 232-mile run south to a factory in Hartlebury in the Midlands, where he'll tip his load of wooden planks at a factory that makes garden fences. There, he'll reload with the finished product and journey 173 miles east to a builder's merchant's in Aylesford in Kent. I do garden every night, like when I park for a night time, I go outside, do a bit of weeding in the lay by, you know. <laughs> Green fingered Mark settles in for another long haul. The times like this, when you're like, whoever invented cruise control, blokes a diamond. I just need to invent something to drive now so I can just go and better something. Mark lugs his load down the M6 for 150 miles. See, so, like, even England comes with scenery. It's beautiful, isn't it? Before he has to make a pit stop, so detours into the company's HQ in Appleton near Warrington. Obviously, the truck needs refueling. I need refueling. I want some dinner. First, it's Mark with some traditionally healthy trucker's tucker. I love that barbecue chicken and cheese. And now Phoebe Grace, and this little lady has a huge thirst. It'll take about 500 litres. Her two Titanic tanks hold enough diesel to drive a car almost 6,000 miles. That's the distance from the Appleton HQ to Japan. Job done. Truck and trucker fully fueled. Get a show back on the road again. Mark gets the truck out of Appleton and motors down the M6. Dixon's on time. <laughs> Bloody hell. To the fence panel factory in Hartlebury near Birmingham. And this is it. While the wooden planks are unloaded from Phoebe Grace, Mark sneaks a peek at how they're turned into fences. A bit different, I've never done that before. Fully loaded with finished fences, Mark hits the road at 4 pm for the last leg of his journey to Kent, where he's due at 9 am tomorrow morning. Obviously, I ain't gonna do it today, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm just gonna go find somewhere to park up. And as night falls, this industrial estate off the A40 by Warwick should do the trick. Salted. And it even comes with all mod cons. Nice lamps, bit of grass. What could you want? But at half five in the morning, it's a totally different story. Right, I've got a flat battery, yeah? As you can see, my truck won't start. Overnight, temperatures plummeted to almost freezing. The only thing I've run last night is a night eater. And it's just killed the batteries. With three hours until he's due at his delivery point and 140 miles to go, Mark turns to technology to help save his skin. 
you get on the Starbuck Finder app, you find the lorry nearest to you, I get work to ring him up and send him out to me. The app tracks the current location of the company's 2,500 trucks. And after sending a quick distress signal, Mark's lady in shining armour appears in the shape of Gabrielle Lilly. That there is my lifeline. I will never, ever lose this lead. After a speedy jump start, yeah, I appreciate it. Mark's back on the road, but he's 20 minutes behind schedule. Obviously, the M40 is, I suppose, it's a, it's a direct road into London, isn't it? So the further down we go, the busier it'll get. With three hours of driving ahead of him, Mark takes the chance to call his best mate, driver trainer Matt Eakins, for a little early morning catch up. Mafia! Thank you. I thought you were at work. I'm sorry, 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 I'm
there's that little glint of hope still there that we will get it done. Ashley's catching up some serious time. We're now on number three of seven. We'll rip the curtain open quickly, get a mop, quit you two, get the heck out of here. That's it. It's now 3 p.m. and a 13-mile drive east to Ashley's fourth drop in Leighton. Who needs prison sentences? Just stick people out in a truck with about 10 drops around London and not do anything wrong again. And to rub salt into the wounds, London's overcrowded streets are not built for mammoth trucks. That's a tight squeeze, but I tell you what, it's going to be made to measure. This kind of trucking takes nerves of steel but the dynamic duo are made of stern stuff. It's all about squeezing it through the gaps. Come on, truck. Let's do it. Ashley approaches the iconic Olympic Park with a gold medal within his grasp, but he's more impressed with another building in view. Most people go, wow, there it is there on the left, not me. No, whoa, there's b &Q over there on the right. Straight past the stadium. He has just over an hour of driving time left to complete four more drops. Okay, and break on, keys out, door open, jump out, gloves on. But quick as a flash, another load of insulation is plucked from his truck. This uh, trailer is surely uh, looking emptier by the hour, which is exactly how we want it. A nine-mile blast east to Beckton will get Ashley to his fifth drop-off. It's literally skinny your teeth, this is. But the clear roads are keeping our Welsh wizard's chin up. It is getting to a point now where, you know, I can feel it. It's, it's going to happen, and I, and I want it to happen. He arrives at drop five with victory in sight. But then there's a problem. Nobody at the warehouse is answering the door. I don't like that on there. Warehouse opening times 0800 to 1600. It's now 1625, so I think it's around the front of the shop. Sob story, begging, and see what the answer is. <laughs> if they won't tip his load, Ashley's day is doomed. Ten minutes later, worth a run around the front of the shop, straight in the warehouse, they're going to tip us. Thank God for that. Lady Luck is sitting with us at the moment. Ashley has just two deliveries left to complete a once impossible looking quest. Six or seven soon to be coming up. After an already gruelling day, his penultimate drop is 15 miles southeast in Dartford. Basically, down to 43 minutes driving to go 15 miles. That can get chewed up and spat out the window quite easily, especially around London. And right on cue, London's evening rush hour turns the roads into a car park. What can we do? With 25 minutes left, he receives a call from his planner, Dawn, who arranges his driving routes. Good afternoon, Ashley. Hello, you're right, how are you doing? Not bad yourself? Rubbish, but thanks for asking. <laughs> she has devastating news for our conscientious trucker. Mate, there's no point with him with him, so. Right, all right then, no worries, okay. With no chance of making his last two drops before his driving time runs out, Dawn has cancelled them. And Ashley's in trucking hell. Today has been one of the toughest days I've had in a very long time. He's been diverted to the Averley Depot in North London, where he'll leave the last two loads for another driver to deliver tomorrow. But on the bright side, it seems like Ashley has finally bonded with our great captain. I hate the place to tell you now. Absolute naff. Absolute sh Absolutely pathetic. When you're in a godforsaken place like this with the traffic the way it is, or maybe not. Thirteen and a half hours after he started his shift, Ashley finally arrives at the depot. 
bringing his brutal battle with the capital to an end. Thank God for that. <laughs> Considering what we were up against, we've done pretty well. I've kept me cool and uh, I'm still wearing a smile on my face. Not just among the titans of the tarmac, but aiming to be admirals of the air. The company bought Southend Airport in 2008, and after £100 million of investment, now welcome up to a million passengers a year travelling to 16 destinations. To keep flying high, the airport must keep their planes taking off whatever the weather. But the freezing British winter can wreak havoc and be extremely hazardous. If there's any frozen particles in any of the wings at any time, it could be catastrophic. It could cause an accident. 32-year-old supervisor Colin Alton is part of a 35-strong airport ground crew responsible for flights taking off safely and on schedule. And a crucial part of that is de-icing the planes before takeoff. You've got hundreds of people's lives in your hands, so I think to myself, if it was my family on that plane, I'd make sure somebody was doing their job properly. With that in mind, the company have invested a quarter of a million pounds to give Colin a new partner in his quest to keep us safe in the sky. Meet Candice, a state-of-the-art plane de-icer who is the airport's front line of defence against the dangerous winter weather. It's early morning, and with snow falling fast and three flights due to take off in the next hour, Candice springs into action, along with Iceman Colin and his sidekick, Martin Wadilove. The aircraft is due to depart at 6.45, so we've got just over 15 minutes. The last thing we want to do is uh, cause a delay on one of the aircrafts. Any delays on the ground could cost the airline money and result in a plane full of angry passengers. At the end of the day, the customer safety is paramount and making sure that the aircraft is de-iced on time and it's done correctly is more important than anything. So unless it's de-iced properly, the plane won't be going anywhere. Today, Colin's in the driving seat and edges Candice next to the first flight. You're good to go, mate. Up in the hydraulically powered basket, Martin grabs the de-icing hose and fires it up. OK, start spraying. Candice weighs 14 tonnes and is a Scania chassis and a Malahan de-icing unit. She holds a mammoth 3,600 litres of de-icing fluid, spraying up to 200 litres a minute all heated to 85 degrees centigrade by an inbuilt furnace. The de-icing rig is powered by a separate 100 horsepower engine, usually fitted in JCB diggers. She's one of the most technical trucks in the fleet, so it takes intense training to be man enough to operate her. Colin must drive his 14-tonne truck within inches of each plane, so Martin can get close enough to de-ice it. So, obviously, I don't want to get too tight, too close to the aircraft, but he, uh, he's guiding me from up there. From up in the basket, Martin communicates to Colin using special headsets, guiding him around the plane. Is that OK? You've got to be pretty precise, because, you, you know, you're manoeuvring around million and million of pounds worth of uh, aircraft here. If he tells you to stop, you stop straight away. If driving safely round a 30 million pound plane wasn't enough, Colin must be wary of Martin's safety. He's de-icing at heights of up to 12 metres, the same as a four-storey building. You've got their lives in your hands, really. Um, I make one false move, that could be them out of the bucket, that could be them hitting an aircraft. And it's not just Martin's life in Colin's hands. These aircraft can hold 156 passengers, two flight deck and four cabin crew. So you're talking respectively 162 people on board an aircraft. That's a lot of responsibility. But there's no problem for these cool customers. And the first plane is fully de-iced in a matter of minutes. So that aircraft there we just de-iced then, that's now left two minutes early. So that's our goal, that's what we aim for. 
One down, two to go. Same again on this one, mate. Here we go. The ice men quickly spray the next plane and it also takes off bang on time. There's just one left, which is due to depart in 10 minutes. And since Colin and Martin have ice in their veins... You've got to be so delicate with the controls on this. It's job done in five minutes flat. After a fight to the frosty finish... Gear out, break on. The final score stands as Candy's three, winter weather nil. Coming up... Sustainability soldier Tim Fox needs a crash diet to complete his crucial delivery. They won't let you out if you're a kilo overweight. Oh, God, I thought the kilos over. Since the 60s, these famous trucks have been a fixture on our roads. With the 20,000 members of the Spotters Club desperate to get a snap of truck and trucker. And one of the most popular pairs is 45 year old sustainability soldier Tim Fox and his trusty sidekick Sarah Gabriella. Over the past two years, they've been through thick and thin in their war against waste. It's like a farmer with a sheepdog. I rely on the wagon, the wagon relies on me. It's 2 pm at the Appleton HQ near Warrington and Tim has just finished his first delivery of the day, ready to hit the road for his next job. But it looks like he's cheating on his beloved truck with a younger model called Alison Victoria. Sarah Gabriella, the old girl, she's gone. And uh, I've got my new one. Alison's my wife, Victoria's my daughter. It lives up to Alison because it doesn't like getting up in the morning. And then when it does start going and playing ball, for no reason whatsoever, the Victoria name kicks in and it has a strop and just stops. <laughs> Tim's waited two long years to finally name his own truck. It's not just a wagon though, it's my wagon. It's got my family's name on it. But like I say, it's definitely got their spirit. But the next few days will put their new relationship to the test. We're starting to get a little bit of snow on now. <laughs> In the past few months, Britain has been blasted with Arctic conditions. And with more bad weather on the way, Local councils are stockpiling tons of salt as another big freeze closes in. And the nitty gritty of getting it to them falls to this dynamic duo. So they're working round the clock to help win the war with the snow. I believe it's supposed to be quite bad tonight and all it's supposed to come down a bit, the snow tonight and tomorrow. From the Appleton depot, it's a 15-mile trek to Winsford to pick up 27 tonnes of salt before taking it 210 miles south to Kent Council's depot in Swanley, where Tim will tip his load. We've got to get the salt for Swanley through. Do all bits of free to south east up of snow. Every year, two million tonnes of salt are spread on British roads to keep them moving with half coming from Winsford, the oldest working salt mine in the UK. It's 200 metres deep, enough to swallow up the Blackpool Tower. Well, 27 tonne of six millimetre grain salt. Salt comes in all shapes and sizes, with six millimetre being the most popular for roads, as its small size helps prevent windscreen damage when it gets sprayed around. Tim parks in place, ready to receive 27 tonnes of it, the weight of 20 cars, so he's expecting a rocky ride. Tim, has been told to be gentle. That's not too bad, that. He's been kind. <laughs> now Tim and his better half face a crucial weigh-in before they can get the salt to Swanley. They won't let you out if you're, if you're a kilo overweight. If it's 44 tonne and one kilo, it won't allow them to print the ticket off, it won't scan. By law, a truck can't go on the road if it's over 44 tonnes. And the Weighbridge says... 
Oh, I've got a 40 kilos over. Unless Tim loses some weight, he's not going anywhere. So there's only one thing for him to do. Open up his back end and drop some of his load. Yeah. After shedding a quick fire 80 kilos. Worst part about it is getting covered in crap. Newly slim Tim is finally ready to hit the road. Good northern salt. Well, that Francis Shandis will insult you get down south. This is hard salt, this. It's now a 210 mile slog south to Swanley. But after three hours of pounding the tarmac, Tim and Alison have run out of working hours. It's getting towards my bedtime. It's getting towards drunk bedtime. So the happy couple park up for the night at South Mims Services, just north of London. Heavy snow is expected overnight, which could seriously delay their morning delivery. And as dawn breaks... Not a flake, nothing. I'm half disappointed. I kept lifting the curtains, having a look, see who was mowing, nothing. Like a kid waiting for Christmas. With blizzards still forecast, Tim hits the road for the final 40-mile leg of his journey to get the salt to Swanley. And it's a smooth run all the way to Kent. I'm expecting a big set of teeth in my ass at some point today now because it's all going too well. I'm not known for my optimism. But there's no frostbite for this well-seasoned pro. And 20 minutes later, he's at the depot. Surprising how quickly can get through it. We get three or four days of cold weather. Tim can get every last grain of salt from his trailer using a mechanical walking floor and a bit of old-fashioned elbow grease. You're going to get a salty. A salty! I thought it was funny, that. And it's emptied in the nick of time as straight away the snow hits Swanley. Swanley's got its salt just in time for the snow. It's mission accomplished for Tim and his new leading lady. With their 27 tonnes of salt heading straight out onto the roads to help keep the drivers of Britain safe. And that is that. Next time, Craig Garside and Tim Fox <laughs> go head to head in a truck off. Oh, he's going for it. Are oh, you sneaky? <laughs> Not a chance. He ain't going to eat Fox a Fox with that manoeuvre. Tramper Mark Dixon has a tight squeeze to contend with. Not like this. I'm driving blind, really. Welsh wizard Ashley Maddox has a high-tech load. Wow, absolutely fantastic bit of kit. And in the name of art, the spotters are out in force. First time my own work has appeared in galleries. Brilliant. 